March 17th, 2023. This is the S&P 500 e-futures or e-mini futures on the Thinkorswim platform, 2000 tick chart. You can go to the bottom into the descriptions to see where I took my trades as well as where I saw potential setups or just some interesting things uh, during the day. So this is what the chart looked like today. It looked like it was kind of in a big trading range originally, but then it kind of uh, sold off and then it kind of traded in this other trading range. So this is how I have marked up my charts. I did find this trend line coming down and I only took one trade today. I'm trying to be work on my patience and not, you know, over trade. So this is a big trend channel that I found later in the day, but it didn't really help out initially because I came up and found all these smaller trading ranges as well as some measured moves, like one big measured move from here to the low of the pre-market. So then I found when this guy swung high, I drew it and came down here, and this red line just kind of helps me see where that bottom is. I also saw, found you know a couple more smaller measured moves here and here. And for the most part, I really only found a few trades on a certain section of the day, probably around 7.30 to about 8.30 during this one-hour block on Pacific Standard Time. The rest of the time, it was kind of choppy. It was hard to find a really good entry or a good bias. So I'm going to go into the trades now. <clears throat> this is the pre-market. This is the uh, overnight or the pre-market high and the pre-market low. So there's two lines drawn there. Kind of captures everything. <clears throat> In the beginning, it just looked like it bought. And then it sold off and I found this channel. But I don't trade the pre-market. It makes two legs up, one leg here, a second leg, and then it opens. So this is where I actually start, uh, I guess, being an actual participant to the market. So here, it's already moving up. It breaks out and it starts trading. I don't have this trend trading range yet, but I do see, you know, I'm just watching price action. So I don't have any good setups right now because you could say there's a new high, first entry long, second entry long, but this is a pretty bad signal bar, so I wouldn't take it. And it came down and then makes a, well, technically, I think I had this down here at one point, then later I dragged it down. So I just make a new low and I see a first entry short, a potential second entry short, but it bounced right off of the EMA. And what I do see here is this is a pretty good signal bar because it broke one tick higher. So this trigger bar has a pretty nice follow through. But at the time, I wasn't sure if a trading range was developing because as I said, I actually had this here. And I think I had this guy a little bit lower, probably around right here. So I wasn't sure if it was going into a trading range because it didn't make a decisive, you know, it made one push up, a second push up, but then I wasn't sure if it was going to break right back down. Turns out it would have worked. And so when I see this, I kind of established the bottom of the trading range here. And then I put this guy here. I had thought maybe putting it up here just so I wouldn't have the overshoot. But I just kept it down here for now just to see if there would be a confirmation. Prices continue moving down. Breaks back into the trading range. Now it comes up to here, and I'm watching carefully to see if it's going to have any kind of reaction to this tra trading range potential top side. It kind of respects it, but then it breaks through, and then it comes right back in. So during this time, I don't really see any good, clean second entries. You could say there's like a new high first entry long and then maybe a second entry long here, but it's like decent signal bar, but you're kind of far from the EMA. You're not really sure because it already made one leg down. This is probably the second leg. So I saw several kinds of similar setups like this where it's very choppy and it spikes back and forth, creating a lot of noise on your potential second entries. So prices continue moving down. There's no good entry here. <clears throat> I do see this. A new low, I see potentially a first entry short and then a second entry short, like a hidden second entry short, because technically this didn't break one tick below here. But you can see that when it opened here, it moved around and it eventually closed here. Then this guy actually opens and he moves up past this guy. So it's actually first entry long. This is the pullback. And then there's a second entry long here. But you could also, since it went past this guy's high, you could also see as a new low first entry short goes up and it creates the second entry short so that's why i thought maybe there's a second hidden second entry short but this is too congested for my liking so i just kind of left it alone even though i rejected the ema and maybe if this is just a little bit had a cleaner setup this red bar was higher and the tick was also higher to 
create a very clean, definitive second entry, then I might have felt more confident because at this point, I'm not 100% sure on my chart reading skills. So better leave those iffy trades alone as opposed to kind of going off a hunch and then potentially losing money. Worst thing that could happen is I actually read this price action incorrectly, but then I take a trade and it rewards me for an incorrect read. That will just reinforce bad habits. So I'm just going to try to be more conscientious and take more clean, deliberate entries. And then as I get better, maybe I'll see more of these and get a better feel for them. So prices continue moving down. I see this resistance or the support down here. So I draw it and I just kind of put the top one right here because it's kind of where it's obvious start. Price is going down. Now it's kind of in this trading range. Now something like this is very, it's more obvious because it's a new low. <clears throat> First entry short comes back up. It almost makes a second entry short, but then here it does make a second entry short. So I saw this and I thought, okay, this might be a trade to take, but I was a little concerned that it's in this trading range. <coughs> if I have enough room to get out, because I thought it might bounce here and come back in. So I actually just sat on it. It has a good signal bar, you know, EMA rejected it and it's been holding prices down. So Turns out it would have worked, but I'm kind of okay with that because it felt like a setup, but it wasn't quite high probability enough for me. Maybe for others who are more experienced, they've seen this a bunch of times, they go like, oh yes, this is an obvious trade. For me, I'm not quite there yet. So I skipped it. Price is continue moving down. Uh, this yellow line is the 200 day simple moving average on the daily chart. It's just something I don't use it to take trades off of. But I do just keep an eye on it because if I was in a trade or as a perfect setup coming up, maybe I could use it as a kind of like a secondary uh, key entry point to help give me more confidence. Because I know a lot of other traders that don't necessarily trade price action rules, they do watch the 100-day simple moving average and the 200-day. So they might react to that. So that's just something to keep in mind. And there's enough of those people out there to actually affect the market potentially. So I do see this, I see a new low here, goes up, 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 here as it makes a first entry short, comes down, and I see this potential second entry short. And I thought, okay, this actually might be another possible trade because it's kind of coming up, it's being, it's, excuse me, the EMA is being respected and it's a pretty nice bearish bar. And it looks like there's just enough room for a quick scalp before it hits this potential invisible support line. But I kind of wished it was a little bit better, so I skipped it, and then I waited, maybe looking for a lower high confirmation. And this is where I get my lower high confirmation. It's also a first entry long, second entry long. But this second entry long, technically, when it made the second entry long here, it came back down, and it's looking like a pretty weak second entry long. Technically, hasn't quite failed yet. Then on this candle, it does fail, but this closeout is kind of this weird between the EMA and also potentially testing the lows again. So even though I thought there was a trade here, I just didn't want to take it because it, it's confirming prices are moving down. It's the lowest of the day because this is previous was the low of the pre-market. This was the low of the day, made another new low. And now here's kind of double confirmation of a, new, a second low. It's kind of like a double bottom here. It made me a little nervous because I certainly... I can look at it two ways. I could either buy here and it'll go flashing back up, but it doesn't set up correctly to do a buy. If I sell, I'm technically selling at the low, which makes me a little nervous. So it turns out if I did sell, it would have worked. And if I bought, you know, I would have gotten stopped out because it would have just went one tick above and then taken me out. So this was certainly a trade, but I didn't understand the context well enough to execute on this trade. Prices continue moving. <clears throat> I'm just kind of sitting on my hands, trying to be patient, trying not to get FOMO. You could say this is a new high, first entry long, second entry long, but this is a good signal bar, but it's below the EMA. It's hard to it's hard for me to pinpoint that it's actually going to move back up. So I saw it, but I didn't mark it or think it was worthwhile to take a trade on. At this point, I do have a trend trading range. And I actually had it cutting up through the bottom here and having this as an overshoot. But then later I dragged it down just because I want to get rid of the overshoot if I can because I don't like it so early in the uh, trading range. <clears throat> uh, this 
when this bar came down, that gave me more confidence to drag it from here down to here. And then at one point, I actually had the top of this trading range actually a little bit lower right here. And then later, I kind of dragged it up a little bit higher to make it fit better with more prices. So here I do see a new low. First entry short comes up, makes a second entry short. And you see this faint, faint line here? I actually had two of these. So I had this guy to potentially be this is the top of the trading range. But I didn't want to discount the possibility of this being the top of the trading range. So when this candle formed, I thought, okay, well, it hasn't touched this guy yet. Maybe there's going to be a fail breakout. But I don't like the fail breakout being, you know, this bullish candle. Because even though it closed bearish, it's kind of a it closed higher than it opened. So I kind of just left it alone. Turns out it would have worked. And plus, taking this second entry short, I was also concerned about how much room I'd get down to the midline, which is right here. Which happened to coincide with this 100-day, 200-day simple moving average, which here may or may not be an effect, but it's just all these different thoughts just didn't give me all the confidence I needed to see a trade. And then I do see this is a potential failed second entry short. So the new low, first entry short, second entry short. Right here, this candle make, confirms the second entry short, comes down, it double bottoms, and it makes another low, and now it's coming back up. So now I'm watching. I don't call it a failed second entry short yet, but I'm watching to see if it's going to bounce off this midline and move up. And I'm watching, but I don't have a trade ready just because I am not 100% sure of it. It moves up. So technically, if you did take a trade right here, it probably would have gotten your scalp for probably two points. But I, as I said, wasn't quite 100% sure of it yet because it's kind of in the middle of the range. So it could either break down or go up. So I just, you know, Wanted a confirmation, maybe a lower high. So it moves up, comes back down. Here I get my lower high. So now I'm pretty happy because I'm thinking, okay, this is a lower high. It's closed above the EMA. It has a clear failure of the second entry. And it has a nice bullish bar. Again, there's this top of this line, which I thought could be the trading range, or it could actually be this higher one. So at this point, I thought, okay, this might be worth a try to take an entry. And that's where I took my first trade. Ends up working pretty well. Now, this trade actually happened very quickly because you can see these three candles all happened within about two minutes. So I took my entry here, flashed up, got me, and then took out my runner pretty quickly. Then I also saw, okay, this is potentially a second entry short because if you say there's a new low, first entry short, second entry short, the count restarts. This could be the new low. First entry short, second entry short. Now, second entry short, I saw here, but I had just gotten out of this trade and I wasn't quite ready to just jump back in again. I'm just not that advanced. So I did see, okay, this is a decent signal bar. It's rejecting the pre-market low, which is this gray line, which is created from this guy. And then, you know, the pre-market high, which is this gray line up here. So it rejected the pre-market low because it broke through, didn't have enough power and came back down. And I thought, okay, maybe, uh, is part of this larger trading range might might be a trade, but I just didn't didn't have the I guess the mindset to take it yet. Turns out it would have worked, and then of course, if I wasn't one hundred percent sure, this is where I could have been sure because this is a second entry short, and then this is a lower high confirmation because it made the second entry short. It didn't break above here, and finally it breaks below, and this candle makes it higher than this previous candle. Not only does it make it higher, it comes flashing back down. Even though it closed bullish, you know, it closed higher than it opened, it's still, a, I think, a decent trade to have taken because this, between the close and the open, is only about half a point or two ticks. So it certainly was worthwhile to either put my entry here or if I just want a little more comfort, a little more wiggle room, I should have put it one tick below the original signal bar. So I saw that, I thought about it in real time, and then I didn't take it just because I, you know, just hesitated, which I'm, you know, slowly working on because I've been burned before by hesitating and then chasing it afterwards. So I knew if I didn't take it and this next candle printed, I should just leave it alone. It did print and it came close to the EMA, and I wasn't sure if it was actually going to reject or be rejected by this top of this trading range. In other words, I'm not sure if it's going to break back into the trading range or if it came here. EMA doesn't really have an effect, but maybe it does in this instance, and it was going to come back up. So in other words, it could have been a first entry long and then potentially a second entry long. 
So when I saw that, it just kind of confused me a little bit more. I didn't have the conviction to, you know, take this short. Certainly didn't have the conviction to take the long because overall bias at the moment of the whole day is still bearish. It would have worked. You know, this would have been a great trade to have taken, but I'll live and learn. And next time, you know, just be a little more, I guess, on top of things. Because this could also be, uh, after thinking about it, could also be considered a fail breakout because it broke out of this trading range, tra <coughs> trading range, broke out, and it looks like it's coming back in. So all that, you know, if I had my entry here and I had my stop probably above this double bar, I would have been completely safe. Because if I actually enter where I thought I should have, which is one tick below here, and then, you know, double bar above here, this candle is only, only about two, two and a half, two, two point or nine ticks. So if I just had a, you know, one tick above, it would have been a 10, 10 tick stop. So, it, you know, it would have been worth, worth a chance. Price to continue moving down, breaks down below. And this red line is actually where the end of my measured move was. So it's one big leg down, which is this big guy, consolidates, and then it makes this other big leg down. And so it kind of reached it down here where this red line is. So I was like, okay, there's a chance all the sellers have been exhausted. So I might see a correction or maybe a reversal. So I do see this set up. I see, okay, there's a new low, first entry short. Technically, it's a second entry short, just one tick below. But I wasn't really comfortable taking a short here just because even though it's consolidating here it's also kind of consolidating down here so there could be a kind of a tiny trading range right here so i i felt you know if that was true there was like a tiny trading range in here let's just draw it who's to say that if i take that trade am i in the middle of this trading range could it go either way i don't know so i left it alone turns out it's a failed second entry short after the fact, but I'm okay with not taking that trade. Just looked a little sketchy. Prices continue moving down. I don't see another good setup. So it actually touches the bottom of this big trend channel now. So at, at one time I had this line coming down as a big resistance, just kind of as a dotted because I wasn't sure it really meant anything. And then I dragged the other line down here. Actually had them really low right here. Then when this guy formed, I thought, well, maybe it's a little bit higher. I don't know. I thought, okay, at one time, perhaps it's actually up here. But then I didn't like that because it just chopped through too many times down here. And when finally this guy shows up, I thought, okay, it actually touches one, two, and maybe there's a small little overshoot up here. So that's kind of how I settled on this big trading range. But it's so huge. Not trading range, just trading channel. It's so huge, it doesn't really come into play at this point. Even if you were to drop in the midline, to create maybe a two two level training channel, it doesn't really come into play because most of the time price action is just kind of oscillating and jumping between these smaller little trend trading ranges. So I'm just sitting on my hands. I don't see a good clean setup. Yes, there are second entries, but they're not high probability second entries because you can say, okay, it's double tops, first entry long, second entry long. Okay, well, this is a pretty bad signal bar to go long. Okay, maybe you're gonna go short, but then you have a potential trading range here. Actually, this is from before. There's no real trading range, but you don't really know for sure because it's kind of chopping above and below the EMA at this point. So it's just telling me, you know, just sit on my hands and wait because I'm not bright enough to figure this out. Continues chopping around. I draw this trend channel going up. I thought, okay, it kind of fits okay. There's some overshoots. It doesn't fit the best. So I have to be careful if I'm looking for a bounce off of either of these, just, you know, know that it doesn't fit the most clean. Then price is continue moving. I do see this setup, almost whip past it. This makes a new high. I see a first entry long, a second entry long. Now the second entry long has a good signal bar. It bounced off the pre-market low, which is this gray line. You know, it cuts back through, but I am not 100% sure because this, this price action has been kind of all down here the whole time. It's having trouble making it back into this big trading range and at this point i was even questioning if this trading range was even a valid trading range because it only touched once so you know there might be smaller trading ranges and this guy even though it's the low of the pre-market it might just not really be anything to be treating uh, with too much respect that you know if it breaks through it's going to make it all the way back up to here because it didn't it didn't prove that previously 
So I saw that. I just kind of left it alone. Didn't really think it was worth risking anything on. Ends up working and it kind of jumps up. But of course, you don't know that at the time. And here I did see, you know, potentially a visual second entry long. New high, one leg down, first entry long, another leg down, second entry long. But when this was forming, this looks like a pretty terrible signal bar. So to even know that it's about to spike up, you'd have to just kind of do a Hail Mary just taking an entry here. But that's just risky because maybe it flashes up and continues back down. So it was, it's hard for me to say that, you know, there's a trade there or you would have known. I think it would have just been more just luck if you had actually gotten that trade. Or you're just like a super skilled chart reader that, you know, defies logic and just can see those things. So price continue moving down. It goes through this trading channel and then starts consolidating in this trading range again. Breaks down below, comes back up. And I see another setup here. <clears throat> but I didn't really think it was that great because it's just like a new... Let's zoom in a little bit. It's a new low, first entry short. It's coming up. There's a potential second entry short for me because it started and ended above this candle. But I don't really like this setup too much because it's just the signal bar wasn't that clean. It's very, to take a trade short here, it's like a bearish bias for sure the whole day. Even though it did kind of correct, go up a little bit, most of the time it looks like it's just coming down. So it's certainly just to uh, sit on my hands again. And then I do see this setup here. So it's like a new low, first entry short, second entry short. And a confirmation lower high is being formed here now. But I also see a new high, first entry long, second entry long. So now I'm in a crossroads because I have second entry short that hasn't technically failed yet, but I also have a first entry, second entry long, which hasn't been confirmed yet. And I also have the EMA coming up. So that tells me, okay, there's dueling, dueling principles happening. You know, it could, if I short, then I believe that this lower high actually formed that I don't think this EMA is going to be valid. And it's just going to flash through. If I long, then I think this is a decent signal bar. You know, it's ready to go break up and out and defy all the other thoughts that I had because it does have one leg up and it's kind of consolidating. Maybe it's going to make a second leg up. So that tells me I wasn't sure and I shouldn't do anything. Turns out it went short. So if I took a short, it would have worked, but I'm okay not taking a short because it could have easily just gone up, you know, break out and make another test this extreme and make another leg up. Turns out it didn't do it that time, so it's hard to have known that it wouldn't have. And right now it's respecting the EMA. I don't see any really good, decent, clean second entries that I feel comfortable taking. And then it kind of gets to about 2.30 and things just start getting noisy and choppy. Because like, look at this. This is all very consolidated. Candles aren't very giving you clear direction. And I just kind of said, okay, well, my one trade for the day should be good enough. And then just kind of watch the end of the market close. This trading range, in hindsight, you know, probably doesn't need to be it's not really telling me much. So probably it was only important right about uh, probably just maybe in this tiny little consolidation area. So I just chop it off here. And then, you know, I do have a, I, I didn't draw them because it's kind of, I wouldn't going to take these trades. There's only 10 minutes left in the day right here. It's at 1250 Pacific standard. But if I was, you know, being diligent and this was a different part time of the day, I would have drawn these guys. So it's pretty much how I saw the charts today. As you can see, I really found most of the trades or most of the possible trades in here and not so much back here. And when I did see that, like this time of day where my arrow, my, uh, excuse me, my crosshair is, I was kind of questioning myself and kind of going back and reviewing my trades, whether these were actually valid trades or was I just getting anxious in this time area and just taking a bunch of or marking a bunch of trades? Because why didn't I kind of see more consistency here? And I figure that actually right back here probably did offer more trades than here. The reason being is these actually have kind of like clear moves that form very nicely. But then when you get later in the day here, it does get very, very choppy. Look at the spikiness of these candles. It's like one tick slightly higher, then it you know, comes down here. One tick slightly lower, then it reverses right back up. And so it's like here is a little bit tougher to, to trade. And also you get these small candles and all of a sudden you get these big, big candles. And in these small candles, you get this big monster candle, another small candle, then another monster candle going the other way. Then you get these tiny ones. So here is just some inconsistent kind of crazy noise going on where here 
you have, a, at least on my chart, there's some candles, but they're all kind of relatively staying the same size. They're all kind of moving in the same motion for a little while. So it's a little bit e easier for me, in my opinion, to have deciphered this time, not this time, but this part of the trading day, as opposed to back here, where it was a little bit more ugly, more noisy. So that's how I saw the charts today. Hopefully that was helpful.